finally, as promised, tonight's number one story, our new regular feature, the WTF moment. An elected governor of an American state continues to flirt with treason. Rick Perry of Texas, who would probably advocate stoning the heathen in Val Verde if it would win him 37 extra votes, has once again refused the opportunity to step back from the stupidity that is secession. We live in a great country. America is a, or Texas is a very unique state inside of that great company. I saw no reason at all for us to be uh, even talking about seceding. But if Washington continues uh, to force these programs on the states, if Washington continues to disregard the Tenth Amendment, you know, who knows what happens. There may be people standing up all across the country in Tea Party saying, enough, all right. How about them standing up in Texas and saying, Hey, enough all right, Governor Asshat. <laughs> Recent polling suggests more than a third of all Texans believe the place would be better off independent of the United States. It is a split among Republicans. But when you reduce it to just the bully's threat to take his ball and go home, 51% of all Texas Republicans approve of the governor's suggestion that Texas may need to leave the United States. Well, you know what the South Carolina politician James Lewis Pettigrew said of his state just before the Civil War. Too small for a republic and too big for an insane asylum. Governor, have you or your separatist friends considered what would happen if you actually seceded? I mean, assuming the rest of the country did not decide it was a rebellion and, you know, didn't send in federal troops and didn't try to capture you and hang you, and in a bitter irony, did not suspend habeas corpus in the rebellious territory so that former President George W. Bush could be detained without charge and without access to attorneys. I'm talking about what would happen if we all just sat back and said, bye, have fun storming the castle. Let's start internally. Your taxes would shoot through the roof. Just FEMA has sent $3,449,000 in federal aid to Texas since 2001. Other agencies sent you another billion just for Hurricane Ike last year. And when NASA pulls out of Houston, that's 26,000 jobs and another $2.5 billion you just lost from your economy. We'd obviously move everybody out of Fort Hood, Texas, whose financial impact on your new kingdom is another six bill. Hey, your own country? Get your own damn forts. And your own damn Air Force, Army, Navy, what is that, 10 billion a year, 100, a trillion? You'll need some form of welfare, social security, you'll have to get your own FDA, CDC, FTC, FEC, FBI, CIA, NSA, post office. You'll need a lot of new investments after the Americans, I'm sorry, the gringos pull out. You've got four nuclear power plants there, well, good for you. Where are you planning to put all the nuclear waste? The Alamo? Remember, these are all the startup costs. I lost track at about $500 billion, and we haven't even gotten to annual maintenance or expansion or improvements. Pell Grants. I forgot Pell Grants. The U.S. gave Texas students a billion dollars in Pell Grants for the academic year 2006-2007. Good luck with that. What are you going to do about your sports franchises? The Cowboys just spent a billion on that new stadium. America's team. That's funny. The Cowboys. North Texas's team. Now, no American network is going to want to televise their games because the ratings in Texas will no longer count in America. You'll be Canada with something of a twang. You think it's a coincidence that half the Canadian baseball teams went out of business because of TV revenues and other reasons and half the Canadian basketball teams? So you take your choice, Astros or Rangers. One of them is going to move to Charlotte. Who exactly do you think your University of Texas football team is going to play now? USC, Oklahoma? Try Sul Ross or San Jacinto JC or the new big rivalry with Tom DeLay Exterminator University. Now, uh, security, you'll need your own Gitmo. Starting wars is optional, of course. See your Mr. Bush about that. And since you'll be surrounded by the United States and Mexico, presumably the U.S. will continue this knuckleheaded border fence you guys started, only it won't be on your southern border anymore. Now it'll be on your northern one because the rest of us here, well, we can't risk the economic impact of hordes of illegal aliens fleeing the chaos of the United State of Texas or the Texican nation or, or Texaco or whatever you're going to call yourselves. So you'll have to put up your own fence at your own expense. We'll talk politics here for a second, too. And let's look at what your departure will mean back here in the northern 49. Congratulations to the Democrats and their filibuster-proof 60 seats in the 98-seat Texas Free Senate. And thanks from the Dems in California, New York, Florida, Illinois, and Michigan, in which will take the lion's portions of those old Texas Electoral College seats, 13. 11 more would go to other blue states. The other red states would, of course, get the leftovers, 10. Per Nate Silver's calculation, if Texas had left last year, Obama would have won the Electoral College by 242 votes, not by 192. 
And also speaking of politics, remember Sovereign Republic of Texas. You've got your big political nightmare coming up 11 years from now. The big political nightmare. The big political nightmare. You know, when the Mexican Texans get the ballot initiative passed on whether or not Texas should become part of Mexico. Right now, Texas is 48% Anglo, 36% Hispanic, with no major change in population, just progressing things outward. By 2020, every projection has Anglos being outnumbered by Hispanics in Texas. That's in 2020. By 2040, the Anglos will comprise barely a fourth of the population of Texas. Sorry, of Tejas. Tejas State in Mexico. Hasta la vista, baby. Don't let Oklahoma hit you in the backside on the way out. Secession. What the? That's countdown for this, the 2,206th day since the previous president declared mission accomplished in Iraq. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.